For over 132 years, the Coca-Cola company has been part of many people's lives. Coca-Cola now offers more than 500 brands in over 200 countries worldwide. The Coca-Cola company also employs over 700,000 people worldwide, creating economic opportunities in many local communities. The company has also taken the responsibility upon themselves to reduce the environmental impact by replenishing water and promoting recycling. Now you may ask yourself, what is the secret to the Coca-Cola brand success? Well, it's the people. The people who have collectively created and benefited from these various initiatives across the African continent. I'm Asanda Marku and I'll be your guide through these various initiatives that the Coca-Cola company has set up. So join me as we embark on this journey to find the secret formula. Our very first stop is the Coca-Cola head office rooftop in Rosebank, South Africa, with a stunning view of the city's iconic skyline. Here we spoke to Bruno Petrashi, the president of Coca-Cola's Southern and East Africa business units. Africa presents a great opportunity uh, for us, and we are very committed to developing the business in Africa. I think more than anywhere else in the world, uh, developing the business in Africa will mean developing the communities we operate. Uh, this is true elsewhere, but even more true in Africa, given the needs of the 1.4 billion consumers that we serve. So we take it very seriously. Our approach through growing the communities is through empowerment. So in the case of um, Africa, we have empowered more than 1.5 million women uh, in the past few years, and we are committed to continue doing so. Youth unemployment in South Africa is a nightmare. It's a powder keg waiting to explode. In a bid to reduce this, Coca-Cola Beverages South Africa, together with its partners, has to date trained over 700 young entrepreneurs and helped 110 of them take their business to the next level through its youth empowerment program. We want to do business the right way, you know, not just doing business just for the sake of business or saying we're doing sustainability just as a tick sheet exercise. Um, we want to create a shared opportunity. So business in a box basically is that we're giving a business in a box. It's a startup kit, it's a spasa cafe and, and it's very different. You know, it looks very different, it's got Wi-Fi, it's got everything that the youth would want in yes. there. Uh, some of them are car washes, some of them are internet cafes. And the way we go about doing it is that we go out to communities, we put a call out there and we call for youth who are, yes, unemployed. I say unemployed, but not really unemployed because if you're running your own little business, you're really not unemployed. We just want to help you formalize it. Next, we jetted off to Port Elizabeth in the Eastern Cape to chat to Sandy Swasikabai, Enterprise Development Coordinator of CCBSA. This initiative started in 2015 and we started in Volko. We have expanded to Rustenburg, East London, Amtata, Port Elizabeth, Morafong in, in, in Gauteng, Kahiso. That's quite a number and of places it's, you've covered, yeah, it's grown. We, when we, we are looking to now expand and take over South Africa. Nice, I love to send that. <laughs> take over South Africa. <laughs> and secure yeah. that bag. <laughs> and, send, and then secure the bag. Yes, yeah. make sure people are not just surviving but actually making proper money. Yeah, they are making proper money. Yeah. And yeah. would you know how many candidates there are through all Ooh. those places? Plus um, minus? Plus minus, let's say 300. Okay, plus okay. Minus 300. that's a good number. Yeah. Now, Sunny, so I just need to explain, you know, for those who don't know what the bag is, a bag is a bag full of money, securing it, making sure you've got it, you've made it, and it's full with money, honey, so that's securing the bag. <laughs> Another interesting thing about this initiative is the fact that you guys, like you said, you specifically focus on the youth, yes. and also specifically women empowerment. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Oh, Asanda, women, youth, you know it, man. Uh, South yeah. Africa and um, women have been facing challenges and you know, most indus industries are male dominated. So we are trying to empower women as much as we can and the youth as well. The youth is the, is the what can I say? The future of it our is country. The future. We, yeah. we are the future. The next you know? Let me not say the youth thing. because I am. So yes. We are the future. No, we both are youth. <laughs> <laughs> we, both, we are the future of our country. So yeah. 
we we are trying to uplift the youth empower them and mm -hmm. you know make them see that there's light at the end of the tunnel business in a box aims to create a sustainable ecosystem of micro businesses offering complementary products and services by using a spaza shop now, as you can see, each business operates from a specially designed container. We're here in the friendly city Nelson Mandela Bay, and we're about to head off to our very first interview with one of Coca-Cola Business in a Box beneficiaries. PE hasn't, well, except for global warming, but it still has such a, you know, great energy about it. I mean, I haven't been here since, I used to go to school here actually. So, you know, this takes me back to my school days, coming to Summer Strand, getting some ice cream at King's Beach. So it brought back really good memories. got to Motherwell. Um, we're here to meet our first Business in the Box beneficiary, Unamsha. It's been quite hectic trying to find her business in a box. Like, it's just crazy. The traffic is insane. It's quite busy out here. So, wish us luck. I'm hoping we'll find her soon. Unamsha Kalipi is the owner of Shares Enterprises and she specializes in groceries, hot foods, hot chips and her speciality which is the ox liver which I can't wait to try out. She's been operating a business since 2018 and I want to go find out how business is going. Hi Namsa. Now Namsa, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into like the love of having your own business? I grew up in King Williamstown. Then I was brought up here in Port Elizabeth. After I finished matric, uh, I, was, I worked uh, for about 10 years. Then when I lost my job in 2016, uh, I was sitting at home thinking, what can I do now? Then, that's when this business thing grew in me. I started selling bright bulk because I needed to provide for my family. I needed, I've got kids, I'm a mother. So I thought, let me just try and do something. Uh, I started selling bright bulk, hot dogs. As a street vendor, I'm playing goddess next to the shipping. Um, now tell us about business in a box. <laughs> how did you find out about it and how did you get involved? Uh, one day, my mother brought a pamphlet uh, with an advertisement on the pamphlet about the down wall sessions. And then that inspired me. I got, in, I got interested since I was already in business. Uh, then I went to the sessions. And uh, then I got inspired. I wanted to be part of this thing, this life-changing program. Yes. So there were forms available there. I took one, filled the form in, because I told myself, you know what, you've got nothing to lose. You mm. can do this. It's an opportunity. Then, yes, it is an, a great opportunity. Mm. Our first phase is we call it town hall sessions. That's a recruitment selection where now we, firstly, we advertise it and make sure that people know about it. During the town hall sessions, we tell them about the process. What is it? What is the criteria? What are they expected to do? And then we take them through. After the town hall sessions, that's when we sit down and shortlist and see who is, who really, who qualifies, yes. who fits in, in the criteria. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we do what we call assessment test, where we test their analytical and numerical skills now on business, right? And then we shortlist again, we do what we call site visits and baseline assessments, where now we actually physically go to the site and check if the person has been operating, check their books, if they've been recording, and we also check their progress, sample the products, see what they're selling, and from there, we move to bootcamp training. So bootcamp training now, it's, it takes four weeks because we are equipping them with um, business skills. Uh, we call different stakeholders, NYDA, SARS, we take them about CIPC registration in case someone hasn't registered their business. Because you can be running a, 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 a spaza shop yes. for years and, and you haven't registered. formally registered. Mm -hmm. And for, for them to acquire the funds, they have to be registered. Register. Yes, you know? yes. So after the bootcamp training now, where we equip them, we also teach them about recording finances, income statements, financial statements. So it's actually everything about business. And we partnered with Growth Link, who takes them for, uh, for three days. Formalizing, we assist them in registering their companies mm -hmm. and uh, doing CSD registrations, bank confirmation, and all that. Then our final stage is called the rollout where we put now the container, wherever a person has identified a site, we put the container there, we stock for them, and 
the container will come with the equipment that the person That's will great. need, depending on the type of business model. So if yes. they need a car wash, we'll give them an equipment for car wash. Car if it's a fast food, we give them deep fryers, coolers, fridges, stoves, and everything that they need. Mm. So it's a startup model. Now, Namsa, can you just um, take us through some of your, know, your successes and challenges that you face with Claire's Enterprises? I am in the middle of the township, mm -hmm. you know, where there's a high rate of unemployment. Yes, yeah. yes. But even though I'm still able to rise up. Mm -hmm. And how do you face with the competitors? How, what are the challenges um, there? The challenges with my competitors is that, yes, they are selling some of the products that I'm selling, but with the service that I'm giving to my customers and the relationship that I'm still building with my customers, they're still able to come back and, and, and they still recommend me because I get new customers every day. Remember, Asanda, when you start a business or when you are, have already been operating, you need a push. You need someone who's going to support you, especially young people. Yeah, you need someone who's going to support you. So during our BDS, we call it BDS, Business Development Support. We assign a mentor for the candidates who will be liaising with them. Uh, depending, they will they schedule maybe twice a month and then telephonically as well. So the mentor would come to their outlets, sit down with them, go maybe for, for an hour and go through the head challenges. What have you been doing? Show me your financial records. The mentorship uh, taught me a lot um, about the importance of costing your product before you get to pricing it. Uh, it has taught me about the importance of having manual operations in your business. Uh, it has taught me on how to be an employer. It has taught me about how to do financial records and the importance of recording. Now, Namsa, I am very excited um, yes. for your business. Thank you so much for talking to us. And talking about the chips and amakwinya, you yes. know, uh, this time around, instead of just tasting, I'd like to help you out. Maybe you can show me how you prepare it. Yes, okay, I can. Cool. I'd love that. <laughs> okay, Namsa, now remember I said I want some liver and namakwinya, so, mm -hmm. which is fat cakes. Can you just show me how you prepare it? Okay, I first switch on the stove, uh -huh. then put on my onion and yeah. fat. Okay, okay, so that's fat with the onion. Yes, that's fat Oh, with the onion. remember I said I'm going to help, so I need to work for my lunch. Yes. So you'd say this is one of your favorite dishes? <laughs> yes, it is. It's very popular, no? Yes, it is. Why? What do you put in that makes people bring? What's in your spices? And I'm like... It's my secret it's recipe. It's a secret recipe. Yes. Okay, what are you putting in now? Uh, a pinch of canned pepper. Okay. Oh, I said I was going to add because now the onion is ready, no? Yeah? Okay. Okay. Do it like this. Okay. That's fine, it doesn't hardly crunch anyway. We are now going to add five mils of spice. No? Oh, the secret spice. the secret spice. So it's ready now? Yes, it's ready now. I want it nice and soft. Okay. So, how much would this portion be? Ah, uh, this portion costs 20 rands only. Okay. So people can get full most. Yes. For so less than a, a McDonald's meal. Yes. <laughs> Yazi, this smells so good. I can imagine why people can, you know, are coming back. But now I need to taste and okay. see if it's as good All right. as you claim it is. Okay. How is it? Are you enjoying every minute of it? What does FAIR stand okay. for? It's FAIR's Enterprises. That's what it is. Yes. <laughs> it's good. It's so delicious, babe. All right. Mm, thank you. I'm glad you like it. I am so impressed with the whole business in the box initiative. I mean, it's such a great way, you know, to grow the economy within the townships. I mean, just to see how people within the community are supporting these businesses is great. I mean, how can you say no to food, especially hot food and groceries? Those are everyday necessities. And, you know, I'm just glad that finally people don't have to go all the way out to town to get these things. Next, we're traveling literally 300 meters down the road to another beneficiary of the Business in a Box initiative, Asanda Nzendo and her business Paradise Corner. Ooh, can you smell that? You obviously can't smell that, but I can smell amagonia in the air and my tummy is rumbling. I can't wait. I hope the magonias are ready because that's her speciality. She specializes in hot food, groceries, even prepaid services. And you know, she's just making things happen for her community. Okay, enough talking. I'm hungry. I want to go talk to her. So let's go. 
tell me, Asanda, just take us through a little tour um, around your Paradise Corner. My Paradise. Okay, welcome to Paradise Corner Cafe. This is actually where my groceries are. And then I do also have a Coca-Cola freezer. And then I also do have the Paws machine. That's where I do all the sales for the food that I make as well as the spaza shop items. Mm -hmm. And then my kitchen will be on this side. Okay, nice. And then tell us, why did you open your business specifically here? The reason I chose this spot was because I was already working there at the car wash, the one that's outside. So I had a little tuck shop there. So it's actually an upgrade from what I was already doing. Okay, yes, so you're right it. in the corner and the yes, hub of things. Exactly. Oh, hence it's paradise for you. Paradise. This is the money-making corner. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> okay, I love it. What's your secret formula? <laughs> okay, some of my customers, they really appreciate our service because we are quick. The environment that we work on is also clean. And then they also appreciate the food that we sell to them because it's always freshly made. And then they taste obviously. Yes. The one that keeps them coming back. Coming back. back. Yes. So it is in the taste. It's you know, in the taste. It's in the food itself and the passion behind it. And the passion the behind it is what makes it to be for one of the memorable back. ones. Oh, nice. Yes. And in terms of employees, do you have any um, people that work for you and help you? Because I'm sure that must, you're not alone. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. I currently have two employees, one part-time and the other one is full-time. Now, Asana, can you just take us through some of the challenges you face um, within your business? Okay, currently I have a problem with electricity. So now I can't really use both my fryers at the same time. So it's making me to slow down on the supply. Okay. Customers always demand something, maybe that's not ready yet. Mm -hmm. So they are slowly losing trust. And also there are a bit of competition around the corner. And Asana, can you just um, tell me, because Yazi, some other fast places mm -hmm. sell like burgers and whatever. Why, why did you choose the, the Magunya routes? Well, before I operated, one of the things that CCPSA helped us with was to do the questionnaire mm -hmm. survey of, okay. of where we want to do our business. So we're able to identify from the customers what they would prefer. Okay. So that's how we managed to choose our menu for our customers. What is your dream and like where do you want to see Paradise Corner going? Okay, the ultimate goal for me will be to have a coffee shop restaurant. I see it happening here, Asanda, and I'm very proud of you. But girl, Thank you so much. a girl's got to eat. I want to try your maquinas. Okay. That smell is killing me. Oh, I've been waiting for this. It smells so good. So let's see if it was worth the wait. Mm. Mm. I can see why it's called Paradise Call now. It tastes like paradise. It's so good. Our next destination is Mtata, founded in 1879 along the banks of the Mtata River as a military post for colonial forces in 1882 and soon developed into a town. It was declared the capital of the Transkei, the homeland of the Kosa during the apartheid era. The former Transkei is now part of the Eastern Cape province. Now, as you can see, I've literally just landed from Johannesburg to Mtata, and I must say that was the quickest in and out airport experience I've ever had. I mean, yes, it's small, but it's pretty efficient, I must say. So you're probably asking, why am I here? I'm here to meet our last beneficiary of Business in the Box, Sanella. I can't wait to meet her. As you can tell, the road is very bumpy. <laughs> um, hopefully not going to hit any potholes. Woo! But hey, okay, okay. Um, yeah, so you know, <laughs> there's still a lot to be done. Okay, so we're finally here at Sanella Mlandu's business, um, which is called Bell's Hot Foods. I mean, she's only started operating since June of 2019, that's in this year, and she's done pretty well. Her specialities are, of course, hot foods like Ulusu, um, which is tripe, hot chips, amakwinya, and yeah, beverages, of course, you know, to wash all that down. Ah, there she is. Hi, Sanella Molo. Hi, Asanda. I'm John. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me, Sanella. Woo. Wow. 
Wow, okay, Sanela, so this is very different from what I'm used to. I mean, I'm used to the business in the box being more of a container and yours is like a structure, like a building. Why is that? This is an existing structure. Okay. This is my mother's site. Mm -hmm. So we have used an existing structure instead of a container because during boot camp stage, we always tell the candidates to identify sites where they would like the container to be put up. And we tell them if they have an existing structure, we are always welcome to brand that and they can use that. Especially if somebody has been operating from that structure, but they just want, you know, um, 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 a renovation of some sort. So that is why we have this here in Sanela's outlet, Bell's outlet in Amtata, Joe Slovo. Now Sanela, I mean, you know, I want to get to know you a bit. So can you just tell us a bit about yourself before we get to the business side of things? I grew up with my mom with a single parent. My mom is a single parent. Eh? Uh, so you're born and raised in Amtata? Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. When I finished school, I helped my mom in her business. Because mm -hmm. you were struggling to get work. Yes. And then I fell in love with the business. Ne? Yeah. And then I heard about a business in a box program from my, from my counselor. Ne? Mm -hmm. And then I went to community hall and then I listened to the presentation. The applier, and then I went through out the, to the pro, to the process. Yeah. Yeah. And and just the process, you know, because you said you know you worked for your mom. How different was it, and what did you learn? I learned about business plan. I didn't know how to do a business plan. Mm -hmm. ne? I didn't know how to record the business records. Ne? Yes. I didn't know how to do it. Uh, yes, the program teach me a lot. A lot about yes, business and yes. stock taking and, yeah, and stock taking. And making sure your numbers add up. Yes. So in terms of bells, now the challenges. Yeah, one of the challenges that you face running bells. What mm. what are those challenges? Higher rate of crime. Mm -hmm. uh, oh really? So what in, what would happen in regards to the crime? Has anything happened here? Yes, Tell they us break about the that. in oh. they break in. Just take us through the incident. What happened? There was a night in, in, in the middle of the night. Ne? Mm -hmm. They came and break the net and came and come inside. Yeah. I, you guys were sleeping? Uh, we oh, were sleeping. Okay. And then they took uh, alcohol there, money was there, they took mm -hmm. everything. And then my mom started fresh, uh, started fresh. Competitors mm -hmm. is my challenge because I have a lot of competitors here and low trading oh, when yes. there is no water there is always no water here mm -hmm. there is always no electricity by bringing business in a box in amtata we are hoping this will create more job opportunities especially for the youth and that will put an end to the crime and the high rate of unemployment so um our beneficiaries for Business in a Box are really also, they really also want to help because they know, they grew up here, they know the challenges that they are faced with. So they want to help as well by creating more job opportunities, by employing people in their outlets. As we have seen with Sanela, she's got two employees in her outlets and that's beautiful because now she has helped other family house, other household to, to, to better their lives. Where do you see Bells going? What is, what is, what, what, what does the future hold for your business? What are your dreams? I see Bells going, have another branches, even in other towns, having Bells, so that we can create more job opportunities. And I'm sure we can do that with my, with my mom. Yes, I'm sure you will, definitely. And, um, you know, just, you know, for the youth out there, people or oh, young kids that are not working, that are struggling to find work and just need some sort of words of encouragement and motivation, what would you tell them? They must not give up, first of all. They must not give up. When, some, they, when they want something, they must keep on pushing, pushing. They must push hard. No matter the circumstances. Yes. Yeah. There are challenges to run a business, but they must keep pushing. 
Okay, Sanela, so this is where the magic happens and yes. it smells amazing. I hope there's still tripe left. Yes. Is there? Yes. Okay, cool. I'd love to taste some. I can see Namak when you're looking golden brown there. I can't wait to try that. And your hot chips, girl. Dilambile. I'm hungry. That's what it means in Kosa. Dilambile. So, what are you, what, are you going to dish up Ulusu for me first? Yes. Okay. Oh, wow. I'm glad I got to have some. Okay, that's that's good for me. Yeah, I, no, not the Russians because I'm having Ulusu. Oh. But at least I know you've got rations for next time and chicken feet mm. among my nut. Okay, so I can let you go sit outside. I don't have to take this home. I can enjoy the scenery, the environment, and it, yes. which is nice because then your customers get to just sit and enjoy the food. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay, let me go outside and enjoy okay. it then. <laughs> and then the dish of the moment that I've been wanting to try. <laughs> so this is tribe. Because I grew up on this also, so I'm looking forward to tasting yours. And it takes hours to prepare, ne? Yes, two hours. Two hours? Yes. Mm. Wow. Mm. That's really nice, Anela. Mm, 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 mm. And then in terms of, um, you know, you were saying that you go basically don't close. Yes. Because there's a tavern here at the back. Yes. I mean, you open at what? What time do you open and what time? At 7 o'clock. 7 a.m.? Uh, yes. And then, as late, what was the latest that you closed? 12 o'clock. 12 midnight? Yes. Mm, that's crazy. So it's Monday to? Sunday. Monday to Sunday? Yes. 7, 7 to 12. Your babe. Do you ever rest? No. <laughs> I'm not resting. <laughs> really? I don't get to. You rest. work so hard, no? Yeah. Right? Now you might ask the question, what is the secret formula? Well, from what I've seen, the evidence is in the people. The people like Namsha, Asanda and Sanela. I mean, these are women hustling every day to put bread on the table. And it's just great to see, you know, the help they've received from this great initiative called Business in the Box. Clearly, Business in the Box is going from strength to strength. Um, what are your hopes and dreams and what, is, what, what does the future lie for Business in the Box? I want to see these entrepreneurs not only only owning one store. Um, I want them one to grow them within their own stores, but also owning multiple stores. And how about they become the next, you know, the pick and pays of this world, the you know, checkers of this world, the woolies of this world. Yes. Who says nobody can start up something like a woolies? Yes. Um, you know, start it somewhere. Start yeah. it somewhere, exactly. So that's that's my dream to see them grow and uh, not just doing one thing. Um, you know, how do they become distributors as well? And not just for Coca-Cola. The nice thing about this program is one would think that we concentrate on our <laughs> products, but it's, yeah. you know, it's a myriad of, of other products that they sell in there. And not only that, I mean, I spoke about internet cafes. It has really nothing to do with our drink. Yes, yes. But, you know, it's about also how do we contribute to the fourth industrial revolution as well. So mm. I would just want this program to grow and grow. And what I would like to have more partners on board, because as I said, it's not a Coca-Cola program. It's, it's a South African program. program. Mm -hmm. So the more the area. The mm -hmm. more the area. South Africa's dire unemployment rate is at its worst with over 54% of youth unemployed. I mean, that's a scary statistic. Considering the fact that these SMMEs make up 28% of the country's jobs. I mean, if they're not too small, they remain as survivalist enterprises. Another scary statistic is the fact that 70% of these SMMEs hardly survive over two years. I mean, this is where now Business in a Box comes in with the great initiative and their mentorship program, making sure that these young entrepreneurs are equipped with the right skills to make sure that their businesses are successful. And I'm proud to be part of that journey. So from me, Asana Marku, until the next time, see you.